Hare Krishna everyone, so we are continuing with teachings of Queen Kunti by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And this is Shravanam Diaries Podcast, I'm your host Sulalita Devidasi, and we are continuing the chapter number 12, Bewildering Pastimes. So yesterday we stopped at the point that Krishna does not need our service, but He kindly accepted accepts it so when krishna asks us to surrender unto him sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam raja this does not mean that krishna is lacking servants and that if we surrender he will profit krishna can create millions of servants by his mere desire so that is not the point but if we surrender to Krishna, we shall be saved. For Krishna says, Aham tvam sarva pape bio moksha ishyami. I shall free you from all sinful reactions. We are suffering here in this material world without any shelter. We even see many people loitering in the street with no aim in life. When we go walking by the beach in the early morning, we see many young people sleeping or loitering there aimless, confused and not knowing what to do. But if we take shelter of Krishna, then we shall know Oh, now I have found my shelter. Then there will be no more confusion, no more helplessness, no more hopelessness. Mm. I receive so many letters daily from people expressing how they have found hope in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, it is not a fact that Krishna descended here merely to collect some servants. Rather, he descended for our benefit. Unfortunately, however, instead of becoming Krishna's servants, we are becoming servants of so many other things. We are servants of our senses and the sensual activities of lust, anger, greed and illusion. Actually, the whole world is serving in this way. But if we engage our senses in the service of Krishna, we shall no longer be servants of the senses, but masters of the senses. When we have the strength to refuse to allow our senses to be engaged other than in the service of Krishna, then we shall be saved. Here Kunti Devi says, quote, Your appearance in this material world is misleading, bewildering. Unquote. We think Krishna has some mission, so some purpose, and therefore he has appeared. No, it is for his pastimes that he appears. For example, sometimes a governor goes to inspect a prison. He gets reports from the prison superintendent, superintendent. And so he has no business going there, but still he sometimes goes thinking, let me see how they're doing. This way, this may be called a pastime because he is going by his free will. It is not that he has become subject to the laws of the prison. But still, a foolish prisoner may think, oh, here the governor is also in, in prison, so we are equal. I am also governor. Rascals think like that. <laughs> Because Krishna has descended as an avatara, they say, I am also an avatara. <laughs> so, 
Here it is said, Navida kashchid bhagavam shchikirshitam. No one knows the purpose of your appearance and disappearance. Tavehamanasya nrinam vidam banam. The Lord's pastimes are bewildering. No one can understand their real purpose. The real purpose of the Lord's pastimes is His free will. He thinks, let me go and see. He doesn't need to come to kill the demons. He has so many agents in the material nature that can kill them. For example, in a moment he can kill thousands of demons merely by a strong wind. Nor does he need to come to give protection to the devotees, for he can do everything simply by his will. But he descends to enjoy pleasure pastimes. Let me go and see. In quotes. Sometimes Krishna even wants to enjoy the pleasure pastimes of fighting. The fighting spirit is also in Krishna. Otherwise, where from have we gotten it? Because we are part and parcel of Krishna, all the qualities of Krishna are present in minute quantity within us. We are samples of Krishna. Where from do we get the fighting spirit? It is present in Krishna. Therefore, just as a king sometimes engages a wrestler to fight with him, Krishna also engages living entities to engage in fighting. The wrestler is paid to fight with the king. He is not the king's enemy, rather he gives pleasure to the king by mock fighting. But when Krishna wants to fight, who will fight with him? Not anyone ordinary. If a king wants to practice mock fighting, he will engage some very qualified wrestler. Similarly, Krishna does not fight with anyone ordinary, but rather with some of his great devotees. Because Krishna wants to fight, some of his devotees come down to this material world to become his enemies and fight with him. For example, the Lord descended to kill Hiranya Kashipu and Hiranyaksha. Should we think that th these were ordinary living entities? No, they were the great devotees Jaya and Vijaya, who came to this world because Krishna wanted to fight. In the Vaikuntha world, the spiritual world, there is no possibility of fighting, because everyone there engages in Krishna's service. With whom will he fight? Therefore, he sends some devotee in the garb of an enemy and comes here to this material world to fight with him. At the same time, the Lord teaches us that becoming his enemy is not very profitable and that it is better to become his friend. Kunti Devi therefore says, Navida kashchid bhagavam shchikirshitam Quote, No one knows the purpose of your appearance and disappearance. Tavehamanasya nrinam vidam banam Quote, you are in this world just like an ordinary human being, and this is bewildering. Unquote. Because Krishna sometimes appears like an ordinary man, people sometimes cannot believe or understand his activities. They wonder, how can God become an ordinary person like us? But although Krishna sometimes plays like an ordinary person. In fact, he is not ordinary, 
and whenever necessary he displays the powers of God. When 16,000 girls were kidnapped by the demon Bhaumasura, they prayed to Krishna and therefore Krishna went to the demon's palace, killed the demon and delivered all the girls. But according to the strict Vedic system, if an unmarried girl leaves her home even for one night, no one will marry her. Therefore, when Krishna told the girls, now you can safely return to your father's homes, they replied, sir, if we return to the homes of our fathers, what will be our fate? No one will marry us, because this man kidnapped us. Then what do you want? Krishna asked. The girls replied, We want you to become our husband. And Krishna is so kind that he immediately said yes and accepted them. Now, when Krishna brought the girls back home to his capital city, it is not that each of 16,000 wives had to wait 16,000 nights to meet Krishna. Rather, Krishna expanded himself into 16,000 forms, constructed 16,000 palaces and lived in each palace with each wife. Although this is described in Srimad Bhagavatam, Rascals cannot understand this. Instead, they criticize Krishna. He was very lusty, they say. He married 16,000 wives. But even if he is lusty, he is unlimitedly lusty. God is unlimited. Why 16,000? He could marry 16 million and still not reach the limits of his perfection. <laughs> that is Krishna. We cannot accuse Krishna of being lusty or sensuous. No. There are so many devotees of Krishna and Krishna shows favor to all of them. Some ask Krishna to become their husband. Some ask Krishna to become their friend. Some ask Krishna to become their son. And some ask Krishna to become their playmate. In this way there are millions and trillions of devotees all over the universe and Krishna has to satisfy them all. He does not need any help from these devotees but because they want to serve him in a particular way. The Lord reciprocates. These 16,000 devotees wanted Krishna as their husband and therefore Krishna agreed. Thus, Krishna may sometimes, sometimes, act like a common man, but as God he expanded himself into 16,000 forms. Once, the great sage Narada went to visit Krishna and his wives. Krishna has married 16,000 wives, he thought. Let me see how he is dealing with them. Then he found Krishna living differently in each of the 16,000 palaces. In one palace he was talking with his wife. In another he was playing with his children. In another he was arranging for the marriage of his sons and daughters. And in this way he was engaged in varied pastimes in all of the 16,000 palaces. Similarly, in his childhood pastimes, Krishna played just like an ordinary child. But when his mother, Yashoda, wanted him to open his mouth so that she could see whether he, has, he had eaten dirt, within his mouth he showed her all the universes. This is Krishna. Although he plays like an ordinary human being, 
When there is need, he shows his nature of God. To give another example, Krishna acted as the chariot driver of Arjuna. But when Arjuna wanted to see Krishna's universal form, Krishna immediately showed him a cosmic form with thousands and millions of heads, legs, arms and weapons. This is Krishna. Krishna is completely independent and he has no friends or enemies. But he plays the he plays the part, sorry. But he plays for the benefit of both his friends and enemies. And when he acts for the benefit of either, the result is the same. That is Krishna's absolute nature. Okay, Jai. So we have completed 12th chapter and tomorrow we will read the next one. Chapter 13, the vital force of the universe. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. Please visit our website shravanamdiaries.com Find this book. Uh, take this book, share this book with your friends and let's dive into Shila Prabhupada's books. Hare Krishna, see you tomorrow.